In this tutorial, we're going to go over the Caloris Color Wheel plugin, and it will replace the swatches and the color floating window, and it does so much more. And I'm going to show you how to understand all the functions and options that this tool has to offer. So first, we're going to go over this top half, and then we're going to go through the sliders and mixers after. So starting off, we have our foreground and background color here, the same way that we have it on the bottom of our toolbar menu and they're just a bit larger and you can still switch them by choosing the arrows. And you can select your color by either choosing the saturation or brightness within the square or choosing the hue on this rainbow slider bar which is now a circle surrounding the square. And as you can see when we select a new color the slider bar changes and we'll talk about why that does it later. So continuing forward we have these six grayscale circles at the very top and they each have different cuts and arrows put into them. And as I click between them, you can see how there are dots that either appear or disappear on the hue slider, and that's because they represent different color schemes. And that can be mono, complementary, triadic, tetradic, etc. And that can be helpful because while you're working, it'll offer you a color suggestion based on whatever color you have selected. So while I'm working, if I always want to see what the complementary of my color is, I'll choose the complementary color scheme. And then from there, if I wanted to see what two colors would work well with the color I've selected, I would choose triadic or tetradic. It all depends on what you prefer, but it's just nice to have it open and available to you. And if you want to learn more about the color schemes, one of the lessons in our color course goes over them. So continuing on here, you can see below our color selection, we have this kind of sun looking tool, and this is actually the luminosity lock. Now, this one can get a little confusing, but essentially what it does is when you choose between colors, so let's say we paint with this red first, and then you want to add a blue, you may have noticed that the actual selection in the middle of the square has been changing with it. And that's because the colors all have different relative brightness and saturation to the human eye. And what luminosity lock does is it keeps that perception the same regardless of what hue you are working with. And when I turn luminosity lock off, now when I'm sliding between colors, the dot stays in the same exact spot. And when I select similar colors, you can see how different they appear as if they're more brighter or more saturated but in reality, they're actually the exact same. So essentially, the luminosity lock helps preserve the perception of the brightness and saturation between colors when you're switching between them. Now going down from here, you can see this color wheel option, and when you click it, it will actually change the color wheel from RGB to RYB. Now, it is up to you on which one you prefer working with. I personally like working with the RGB, which is the modern color wheel, and it has red and cyan as complementary, whereas the RYB has red and green as complementary colors. And you can watch the color wheel tutorial if you want to go further in the pros and cons of each. Now below our color wheel selection, we have our gamut lock tool. So essentially what this does is it will limit the color selection that you are able to use in your painting. Now this is a great way to practice using a limited supply of colors at your disposal, and people always assume the more color the better, but actually if you can learn to limit the color palette that you're working with, oftentimes the results are much better. And you may have noticed that when we clicked it, the top color scheme circles have now changed into different shapes. And if you select between them, you can see what they offer. Now this one's actually a custom one, and you can edit it by clicking the pencil tool in the lower left here, and grabbing the red points to create your new shape. And if you ever needed to reset it, you would just double click that white point in the center. And if you wanna rotate it, you go on the outside edge and you wait until that little gray rectangle appears and then you slide around. And when you're finished, so let's say here, you choose the check and it'll apply the shape. And while this will affect your hue and saturation, you have to manually adjust the brightness of the color. So you can see as I go lighter, the colors get lighter, then as I go darker, the colors get darker. So if you're ever feeling overwhelmed with all the colors that are available at your disposal, I would recommend trying this out. And the last thing in the lower left hand corner, just under our gamut lock, is switching between a square and a triangle selection. 
And this only applies to the brightness and the saturation of our colors. And both are based on a gradation of 0 to 100 of either saturation and brightness. So on the square, left to right will adjust the saturation, whereas up and down will affect the brightness. So now the triangle will work a little bit differently. So you can see on the square we have a giant black bar on the bottom, whereas on the triangle it's pinched into one corner. So if we go down the line on the saturation, you can see how it stays consistent on each, and it slowly goes down, but then as we get to black, regardless of where it is on the square, it'll stay the same in the triangle. So the best way to think about it is if you grabbed this corner and you pinched it all the way to the left side, that's what will create your triangle. Now it's up to you on which one you prefer, but I would at least play with each and see which one works best for your style. Now if you look in the bottom right hand corner here, this is actually your hex color code because every color has a specific pattern of numbers and letters which identifies it. So as you select different colors you can see how they will change and this will help because if you're working and you need to work with a specific color you can just type in the combination of letters and numbers to receive that color. And the last thing that I'll talk about on the top half of the tool is if you want to simplify the actual selection of colors you go to the options menu which is on the top right here choose configure and you can see how there's a plus or a minus and as you click minus, it kind of breaks down the color into its simplest form. And this can be helpful because this way it forces you to work with the either primary colors or secondary colors of the color wheel. So I'm going to keep it at the gradation, but it's just another tool that you have at your disposal. So now let's talk about the bottom half of this colorist tool. You can see how we have two tabs here, the sliders and the mixers. On the sliders tab, you have different modes that you can choose from. And essentially, you can slide whether or not you want, in this case, more blue. So the further right you go, you add the color, and the further left you go, you take it away. So if I didn't want any green or any blue, you can see how our color just became red, because our red slider bar is all the way up. If we put it in the center, you can see how it turns into a neutral gray. Now, which one you want to work with is up to you. I personally like working with CMYK, but I see a lot of people working with the RGB and they just manually adjust the color from here. The second tab is the mixers. Now, right now, I only have my color history open and what that will do is every time you select a new color, it'll add to your color history. But if you choose these five dots underneath, you can see how we'll add the different ones that are available to you. And if you want to know what each does, the best way to work with it is to just experiment and see, okay, if I choose this color, how does that affect the bottom schemes down here? So let's go in order. The blender will essentially take the foreground and background selected color and create a gradation between the two so you can see the colors that would blend in between. Then for your shades and tones, it'll show your selected color and the colors in between it going to black and to white. And your swatches are ones that you can individually save. So let's say, let's pick a color here that we like. If I wanted to save the salmon color, I click, drag it down into my swatches, and from that point forward, if I select a different color, it'll still be there. And the scheme will create a cool little color palette for you based on the color that you have chosen. And I always keep auto sample on. If you turn it off, it will stop auto selecting and creating your blender, your shades and tones, and your scheme on what color you are currently selecting. And it will go based on whatever color you had selected when you turned it off. So overall, I think this is a great plugin to use if you're constantly painting within Photoshop. I definitely think it's worth at least experimenting with, and you can go check it out at chloris.com, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below.